Good morning, Covenant City Church. Our devotion today is taken from Daniel chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. Though this story might be one that's familiar to a lot of us, I pray that we can be uplifted and encouraged as we read God's word together this morning. Let's read the passage. Daniel 3, 13 to 18. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Thus says the Lord. So if you remember this story, right, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were three friends who were exiled to Babylon. They were worshipers of Yahweh, of the one true God. But then the king in Babylon had passed a proclamation that whenever people heard the sound of a trumpet, they had to stop and bow down and worship him. When these men refused to do that, they were brought before the king. So in the passage that we just read this morning, the king was giving them one last chance to change their minds, one last chance to bow down and worship him. So this morning, we're going to look at the men's answer to the king. They were confident in the power of God, and they trusted in the sovereignty of God. So first, they were confident in the power of God. In verse 16, they tell the king that they have no need to answer him. When they say that, they're not saying, ha ha, we don't have to talk to you, but rather they're showing that they respect the king. They're willing to obey him when his will and his laws don't conflict with the law and will of God, but they have no need to defend themselves or to argue with him. I've noticed that when I feel defensive, it's often because I kind of feel threatened by the things that the other person is saying or doing, right? I might have a tiny bit of doubt that maybe they're right, or I might feel like I have to prove myself, and then this makes me defensive. But these men were not defensive. They were so utterly sure about the character of God and what he had asked them to do that they were not threatened by what the king had said. They could be respectful because they were so sure of God. So then in verse 17, they go on to proclaim the almighty power of God, right? They say, he is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. He will deliver us from your hand. So there's no doubt in the minds of these men that God is able to rescue them from their situation. They know that he is powerful. But then in verse 18, they also demonstrate their faith in the sovereignty of God. They said, but even if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. So here these men are showing that not only do they believe that God is powerful, but they also know that God is sovereign. They know that God is able to deliver them from their circumstances, but then they demonstrate their understanding that his ways could be higher than their ways. He might choose to not change their circumstances. And they're saying that even if that is true, they still trust him. This is striking because a lot of times we approach God transactionally, don't we? We say, God, I will obey you. I will only date Christians but you have to hold up your end of the bargain and you have to provide me a spouse on my timetable. We say, God, I will obey you and I will be honest in my business practices, but you need to make sure that I flourish financially. We're willing to obey, sure, but we wanna get something out of it. But these men show us the truth, right? That as we trust God, we relinquish our control over our circumstances. We know that he is powerful enough to save us. He is powerful enough to change our circumstances, 
but we also trust that his will and his plan is greater than that which we can see. Our obedience does not depend on God bending his will to our circumstances. Rather, we trust that God will change our hearts as we submit ourselves to his will. God is in the business of glorifying himself, and we know that everything that happens is for our good and his glory, even when we have no idea how. So friends, when we face situations where the world is calling us to compromise, let us be encouraged to respond with confidence in the power of God and trust in the sovereignty of God, knowing that whatever circumstances we face, our Father is in control. But if we're honest, we know that truth, and often it's still really hard, isn't it? We're tempted to compromise on our undivided worship of God. We're tempted to get frustrated and give up being obedient when our dreams seem out of reach. Dr. Michael McKelvey observed that in order to have a complete understanding of these verses, we need to also look at verse 27, also from chapter 3. Verse 27 says that everyone gathered and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of these men. The hair of their head was not singed, their cloaks were not harmed, no smell of fire had come upon them. So God's power here is demonstrated in totality. The men were not even singed, even though they'd been thrown into this incredibly hot furnace. And we can see the parallel for us today. Though God does not promise to deliver us from every earthly circumstance or trial, we know that he has delivered us from our greatest destructive enemy, our own sin. And we're not just scraping by, right? We're not just making it to heaven by the skin of our teeth. No, the fire of hell has no power over us anymore when we are in Christ. Our sins has been removed so far from us that there will be no smell of fire on or near us. And friends, that is the reality that drives us to worship. That is how we obey and we trust with confidence. When we see the amazing, unending love of Christ, who has given us everything and has taken away the one thing that would surely destroy us. He who did not spare his own son for us, how will he not also with Christ graciously give us every good thing? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your power is greater than we could comprehend. Your majesty, your glory reaches to the heavens. And Father, we confess that so often we are swayed by what the world says. Our hearts are fickle and they are prone to wander. God, we ask that you would deepen our love for you and that our awe for your glory might overwhelm us so that when we face circumstances in this life where we long for the circumstances to change, that we would pray earnestly and honestly to you to intervene and we would have the trust in your goodness to be able to say, but even if not, Lord, we love you, we trust you, and we pray all of these things in your name. Amen.